So welcome to uh, live from Marco studio here in Princeton. And um, I am usually pontificating by myself, but today we have a, a dear friend, uh, Joshua Clayton uh, uh, from, from New York City, right? Uh, tell us where you are and um, what you have been doing. Yeah, well, uh, hi from New York. Today I'm in a, uh, Today I'm in a spare office on NYU's campus because there's construction going on. So I've been, uh, I've been displaced for the summer, oh. um, mm -hmm. uh, but I still have some space, which is which is nice because I also have two young kids at home, and so the prospect of doing stuff like this <laughs> from, <laughs> from my living room, uh, yeah. as many know, has just been complicated this past year. So it's good to it's good to be able to talk to you. Um, yeah. In this space. Uh, I, um, I teach here at NYU. I've been teaching here for about, um, for about seven years now. And although my background is entirely in art and design, I, um, as fate would have it, I'm teaching in the computer science department yeah. here. And, um, and, and that's kind of interesting for me um, because I feel like a translator in this space. Yeah. Um, as an artist, I, I work quite a bit with code. And yeah. so by, um, by translator, um, I feel like uh, a lot of what I do in the CS department is help college students express themselves with code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, you, you fell right into that, right? Uh, as the technology, uh, what we're going to talk about is blockchain and Bitcoin and Ethereum, but um, it, it seems like technology just developed around <laughs> what you do. Yeah, well, um, I, I think for me, uh, and, uh, you know, a point of connection, Mako, among many for us, yeah. um, is that I was living in Japan for uh, for a few years, um, just before we met, actually. Yeah. And during that time, um, I, I started to become increasingly interested uh, in the, I guess you would say, the the creative potential of computational media. Um, I was always interested in what you could do, for example, with photography and digital video. And as you and I have talked about before, so much of the arts emerge from technological in, uh, innovations, whether that's, whether that's the paintbrush or the pixel. You know, these are all kind of technological evolutions. Um, but during that time in Japan, shortly after I had graduated from college, I was thinking a lot about the um, what you might describe as the the plasticity of digital media and how you could um, manipulate, um, how can you can manipulate information uh, with greater, um, with more control, I guess, than you get from often uh, graphical user interface software, you know, like Photoshop or video editing software. So, so that's kind of what got me on a path um, as I was uh, visiting exhibitions around Tokyo at that time, and then eventually moved to New York. That put me on a path um, toward uh, honing some programming skills that kind of allow you uh, to go deeper into those explorations. Yeah, that's amazing. So <clears throat> for absolute uh, beginner, novice into uh, an area of Bitcoin and uh, blockchain, uh, help us understand uh, what that, what this is, uh, what's going on, you know, and we hear about, um, you know, Christie's auction um, with people uh, fetching $69 million and, yeah. and hear about, you know, all these, uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin prices going up and down, but, but uh, you know, but, but from where it was it's several years ago, I mean, this is skyrocketed in value and people say this is here to stay. Um, what, what's going on? Yeah. I maybe maybe uh, it's um, I think it's super interesting the way that uh, those high profile auctions are bringing attention to the space. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it it would be um, it would definitely be helpful maybe for this conversation if we kind of uh, move a little bit below the hype cycle <laughs> of yeah. NFTs from the past few months and just start with the blockchain like. Yeah. 
yeah. what is the blockchain and and what does that have to do with um with bitcoin and ethereum and and all that stuff so um the blockchain is essentially a collection of time stamped records that are linked together cryptographically all right some people call it a distributed ledger and essentially what that means it's like um just a uh a, a detailed, verifiable record of exchange of information, uh, often financial transactions between two parties, right? And each block in the blockchain includes a reference or cryptographic hash to the previous block in the blockchain. Yeah. And so because they're linked in this way, you can't really mess with them, right? It's hard to say, oh, no, uh, you know, this person gave me 200 Ether or this person actually gave me a million dollars in Bitcoin or something like that because of the decentralized nature of the distributed ledger known as the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Lots of people could say, no, we have a record of this transaction and it shows that that didn't happen. And so it's fairly secure. Uh, that doesn't mean, <laughs> that doesn't mean uh, it's not vulnerable at all, but it's a fairly secure, decentralized way of verifying records between you know, two or more parties, essentially. Yeah. So, so what was interesting was uh, Beeple when he was interviewed by CNBC. He talked about uh, a house title, right? It used to be like if you buy a house, you get a house deed or house title. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's we consider that to be the most secure transaction. But he said, you know, what if you lose the title? You know, that you have no evidence that you own the house, you know, apart from perhaps registering it and blah, blah, blah. But you have to go through all that. Well, he said, now you can use blockchain to do the transaction. You can have the paper title as well. But but the blockchain is, he said, more secure. Hmm. Uh, explain that to me, because how could, you know, something that's invisible in a machine be more secure than than, than the actual paper? Yeah, so so we we tend to um, we tend to uh, to put our our trust for the the authenticity of these transactions in yeah. institutional systems, yeah. right? Like like banks and and governments. They're the ones who back us up. And from you know we could go much deeper into that as a conversation. Mm -hmm. But from a societal perspective, that's worked well uh, for centuries, right? There is some kind of mediating party that says, no, this person owns the house and not this one. Mm -hmm. Now, it's an unfortunate development in our culture that trust in institutions has eroded, right? Mm -hmm. And so one, uh, while trust in institutions has eroded, um, trust in technology, for better or worse, has increased, right? We rely on technology for so many aspects of our day-to-day -day living. So essentially what the blockchain does is give us um, a form of record keeping that is separate from institutions. And it's hard to, dis to dispute uh, the veracity of those records because they're maintained by uh, hundreds of thousands of computers around the world. That's what we mean when we say it's a it's a decentralized, it's a distributed record keeping system, because it's not like there's just one person or one computer server that actually is maintaining this record. There are hundreds of thousands of people around the world whose computers have a record of that particular block, that yeah. particular cryptographic hash. And yeah. so it's hard for somebody to say, no, that's actually my house. Now, the interesting thing about that is it, it can expand beyond just the, the concept of ownership for currency and houses. Like yeah. these records, and I think this is the most interesting thing, and maybe it segues into the creative aspect of our discussion, Mako, is yeah. that the blockchain is not the same thing as cryptocurrency. It yeah. is the foundation of cryptocurrency, but the blockchain can make... Uh, can keep records of everything from cryptocurrency 
to the provenance of the salmon that you're eating at a nice restaurant to baptismal records, right? And so this is where some of the creative potential opens up for us is there are all sorts of things that we can keep track of with the distributed ledger known as blockchain technology. Yeah, so, so you just took us into the rabbit hole. You know, the matrix <laughs> just opened up. Okay, right. you just said that this is not just about Bitcoin, you know, value of Bitcoin going, going up and up. It's about the technology that opens up a whole new way of, let's say, uh, transactional uh, purposes, but, but also that it's distributed. Right, so so we used to rely on institutions, uh, banks, and so forth, governments, but but now blockchain seems to have uh, have this ability, and and maybe the ethos, right? That there's something about the creators of this technology that said, you know, this, this idea of you know some very powerful person at the top, you know, controlling everything is not a good idea. Is, am I am I getting that uh, correct, or is 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 that part of the blockchain technology? Yeah, I, I think decentralization is huge. I think that's a that's a key concept. Uh, people come at this from a lot of different perspectives, um, like people who are interested in blockchain and cryptocurrency by extension. Um, often uh, have different motives for doing that. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I'm very interested in the decentralized aspect of it. The fact that it's not hierarchical, it's not institutionally controlled in the same way, mm -hmm. because in theory, that opens it up um, to, um, I guess you might say, uh, a freer space, right? Now, yeah. that doesn't automatically translate to freer space, right. um, I attended a conference on uh, blockchain tech and its relationship with art back in, I think it was 2018. And one of the points that came out of that conference was decentralization does not always translate um, to, to greater freedom or lack of authority. Right. Right. Sometimes what it just means is that the authority just shifts to other yes. people right. or institutions yeah. or something like yeah. that. So right. um, I'm not trying to be just like a, uh, I'm definitely not just trying to celebrate this technology as like some kind of thing that's going to save us, but yeah. rather uh, explore its potential, especially for people like you and I who want to use right. it creatively as well. Right. Right. So uh, the other the other thing that you said, you know, in, in going into the rabbit hole here is is that uh, it requires a lot of computers and yeah. therefore uses a lot of power right now, mm -hmm. which, which has been raised as one of the issues because yep. these people who are part of the blockchain society, let's say, uh, are people who are very concerned about the environment. Is that right. uh, correct? Yeah, and and that's a that's a position that I absolutely share. Um, so just let's back up just for a moment to yeah. talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum, and mm -hmm. then let's talk about the proof of work network that they right. exist on. So Bitcoin, first cryptocurrency, um, proposed in a paper written by the uh, um, the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto back in 2008 for this new digital currency. Yeah. Obviously, Bitcoin is the most high profile. Yeah. It is exclusively a cryptocurrency that works on the yeah. blockchain network. Okay, um, Ethereum uh, is an open source blockchain um, that was proposed about five years later in 2013 mm -hmm. by Vitalik Buterin, and it features something called smart contract functionality. And yeah. essentially those smart contracts mean you can build stuff on top of the Ethereum platform. Mm -hmm. It's not just ether, the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. It's also something that you could build stuff on top of. Yeah. Now, both Bitcoin and Ethereum work on a proof of work basis which yeah. means that uh, in order to mine those cryptocurrencies, um, you have to solve cryptographic puzzles, which take a lot of computer processing power to, uh, to complete. So when somebody talks about the, um, the environmental inefficiency of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and the platform Ethereum in general, they're referring to this proof of work um, system that requires a lot of computers to be running constantly to be able to solve the puzzles that allow them to mine 
yeah. and therefore, therefore be rewarded with the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Now, um, just for nuance, a lot of those mining operations are located near hydroelectric power, so mm -hmm. a renewable energy source yeah. um, in, in places where there is renewable energy to spare, uh, often namely China, and that might come up later in the conversation yes. as yes. well. Yes. Um, but that is the reason, and that's, that's yeah. the reason that the, there is this, uh, there's this ethical um, dimension to thinking about cryptocurrency yeah. and, and your involvement in it. However, there are other models which we might get into at some point as well. Yeah, so um, when I heard about Ethereum uh, as a new kind of, you know, Bitcoin, you know, and, and then I realized that what they have done, uh, and these guys came out of Bitcoin uh, the, the background, right? I, I, asked, I, I heard that somewhere. But they, they, they realized that Bitcoin as just a currency cannot be a real game changer in terms mm. of creativity, uh, innovation. Um, and so, um, you know, I was starting to hear like blockchain technology in Nashville, you know, this would be a game changer for musicians, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden come last Christmas, you know, the, the people uh, blew up and, 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 and then they were, uh, everybody was talking about the Ethereum. Um, and I was like, what is that, right? And, and so the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is huge because Ethereum allows, as you, you noted, super contract uh, built into it. Right. which is not only secure in terms of you know, currency transaction, but it builds in something to it, including music, art, and whatever right. we, we want, I assume. It, it, is, is that uh, kind of a way to look at Ethereum? Yeah, um, the, uh, the, the fact that it um, is, a, is, a, is a programming language, is, is a way of scripting additional functionality on top of it, this yeah. smart contract functionality, is what makes it not just a cryptocurrency infrastructure, mm -hmm. but also a platform for building out new things, right. one of which uh, came out of... Um, the uh, so-called ERC-721 comment, Ethereum request for comment, which uh, formed the basis for NFTs. Wow. So let's, let's go dive in there because you have been creating NFTs. Uh, we, we have to explain what that is, but, um, and, and you started to harness this technology of uh, especially Ethereum yep. to create artworks that is that kind of uh, is built into this blockchain technology. So can yeah. you walk us through what you did? And, and we're going to show your piece as you know, we're talking here. So yeah, sure. let's you know, uh, uh, find out what, what your work looks like. It's, it's a fascinating, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, this, you know, sci-fi world, right? Uh, with, with Japanese neon signs and, and, and so forth. But, but you, you have a particular philosophical message built into it. So let's, let's dive into your work and how, how did you develop this? Uh, what, what did you want to communicate? Uh, and, and how does the technology of Ethereum and blockchain, um, you know, inspire this piece? Yeah. Um, I think in general, as an artist, um, I'm trying to explore um, ways of seeing um, uh, deeper forms of sensing, um, mm -hmm. what I sometimes refer to as, as network metaphysics, um, which is essentially to say, uh, I, I believe in our fundamental interconnectedness, and mm -hmm. if there are ways that I can visualize that um, and, and, uh, and aid in um, and making that more manifest for people, um, yeah. the, way that, uh, the way that we are connected. So in that sense, uh, network technology has often um, aided my explorations because network technology obviously interconnects us in some meaningful ways, yes. but I don't feel like that is the extent of our 
ontological interconnectedness. Yeah. Um, and so I'm interested in ways um, that we can that we can see that. And and oftentimes in contrast to uh, something like the web, that requires a little bit of slowing down <laughs> too, <Yes>. right? <laughs> and so, so I'm working, uh, you know, I'm working sometimes in this contemplative way mm -hmm. that is um, that is contradictory to the medium of right. of the internet in right. its uh, in the way that it kind of tries to um, to speed us up and yeah. uh, and hyper connect us yeah. as well. So yes. uh, NFTs or non fungible tokens are simply an extension of those experiments, uh, that work that I've been trying to do for, um, honestly, since, since I was, I was living in Japan in the, in the early 2000s. Um, Is it's that when just you that first heard of NFT. When did you first hear of that non-fungible token? Word? Yeah, I think somebody sent me, <laughs> it wasn't even something I came across myself. So I think uh -huh. it, I think it like late 2020, yeah somebody sent me this um because i was already interested in how blockchain technology can be used in creative yes. ways i just wasn't familiar with the term nfts yeah. which is yeah. feels like is the way that uh culturally we've grabbed on to this this moment of using right. the blockchain creatively yeah. um yeah so so nfts have just allowed me to kind of distribute the work that i've been doing for over a decade already in a in a new way and in a in a monetizable way as well yeah, which yeah. which has implications that are that maybe for some are both positive and negative because mm -hmm. it puts digital artists in conversation with the marketplace in yeah. ways that they haven't always been before right. you know there's something almost there's something that about digital art they almost resist monetization because yeah. it's hard to yeah. capture and yes. you know in the same way that you can a painting right. um, but nfts because they are non-fungible and by non-fungible i mean that they are verifiably yeah. unique if i give you a dollar mako yeah. you can give me any dollar back and it is mm -hmm. effectively yeah. the same but because of blockchain technology wow. we have the way of verifying the authenticity of a particular piece of digital art mm -hmm. and say you are the one who owns this digital piece mm -hmm. of art mm -hmm. of course that mm -hmm. like anything mm -hmm. requires some kind of faith in that system that mm -hmm. this is legitimate mm -hmm. but if enough people put their faith in that system uh then you've got a new kind of art market mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's fascinating right because uh you just mentioned the word faith um and you know we uh, talk about these matters, uh, even if you don't understand blockchain, you know, you, you, you might be talking about faith in the system of the government or institutions mm -hmm. such as the banks. And, and uh, you know, in, in many of the uh, discussions that I've heard of people puzzled over why, why would you spend millions of dollars on this invisible reality, you know? And, 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 and I think it was people, but, you know, he said, like, um, actually, you know, have you ever, like, you know, whatever you have in your bank account, have you ever seen it? <laughs> you know, and, and it's a brilliant way yeah. of, you know, talking about, uh, we actually already rely on faith and yeah. invisible technology, technology that uh, yeah. assume security, right? And, and so big blockchain is not you know anything different from that like like yeah. Wells Fargo has you know how many you know uh, of your daughters well you've never seen it you know it's there assume you know you can go to ATM and cash that and get the physical thing but that's like tiny amount of what yeah. you actually perhaps own and and that's uh, that's an incredible reality, right? Opening up and when when you talked about metaphysics of this and you know um, media ecology, you know the idea that the media itself uh, it, it has kind of a, um, a reality of generativity to it or uh, some kind of life, the ghost in the machine. You know we, yeah. we talk about that in the past. But now it seems like this is part of, you know, what, what's happening culturally as well yeah. as, so, so the world of business and world of art, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, right, came together in 2020. Yeah. 
And, and just on a side note, um, you know, I heard people say that 2020, the shutdown had a lot to do with the uh, ampli amplification or development of this rapid acceleration, perhaps. Do you think that's true? Uh, was, was this technology that was burgeoning and it was gonna happen anyways, but was it accelerated by, do you think the shutdown in 2020? I, I wonder. I wonder, Marco. I think that's a that's a really um, I think that's a pretty salient point. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how much um, cryptocurrency overall benefited from it. Right. I, I think that NFTs benefited hugely yeah. from yes. it um, because it actually provided a way um, uh, for culture to happen. Yeah. Um, when without going to a gallery, you know, and, and I, that, you know, I think for a lot of people who worked in the earlier days of internet art, I think there mm -hmm. was a little bit of, um, I think, um, yeah, I, I think, I think some people were like, hey, we've been doing this for, for years. Yes. So, yes. so why, why all the attention now? Yes. But I, I think you're right that it's convergence yeah. with the marketplace um, accelerated it in, in a different way. Um, and, and you're right about the dollar as well. I mean, there's nothing fundamentally that backs up the dollar anymore it's not like right. it's linked directly to even <laughs> precious metals or something but right. it is linked right. to to uh to our government and yeah. it's going to stand behind it and so yeah. you know at the end of the day there there is a, a different kind of power <laughs> right. it's not necessarily right. computing power right. um it's, it's a different kind of power that says that dollar is worth one dollar and it's not right. you know it's not just a piece of cloth or paper or whatever yeah so when we uh, um dive into the matrix we start to see that um during last year the, the, the just just this uh not just amplification of technology uh blockchain technology but but reality of how people view economy itself right so mm -hmm. you know the games game stop stock you know meme right. stocks that that went crazy and that's right. not uh, separate from what we're talking about and the gallery system that you yeah. and I have been you know part of uh, for many years in New York you know people said there are only really five galleries you know they 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 are the gatekeepers you know and if you don't you, you know there's no way a young artist can make it today because the gates are so tight right that there is no opportunity for anybody coming up to showcase their art um, in, in New York City and Los Angeles and other places. Well, now that's completely changed. You know, 2020 just, you know, just, just was a year in which that system, let's say the you know, same thing, institutional system, high bar, uh, you know, um, people who are controlling, let's say the market can no longer control it because you can, Get on Instagram, and you know before it was um, art fairs, right? The galleries were forced to, you know, uh, send the staff to all these art fairs everywhere because the market was starting to shift toward more democratic system of yeah. people saying, no, no, I don't want to go to New York to buy art. You know, I just want to go to Miami, or I just want to go, you know, uh, Europe, some city in Europe. Now that has, you know, that has played its course, and and now it's completely on on the side of digital technology and and internet. And I think that is surely one of the you know the 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 results of uh, 2020. And okay, so let's let's go back to your work. Um, so you're doing. I'm going to show your piece um, here here in this section, but but. Uh, tell us about your piece and and what, uh, what what what's the motivation behind it and uh, it's a beautiful piece um, and and uh, you know walk us through it. Yeah, sure. So one of the one of the first pieces that I um, minted as an, an as an NFT. Um, well, tell us what that means. What does it mean to mint? Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. So okay. to mint an NFT uh, essentially means. Um, to record that transaction, that of that availability of the piece to the blockchain, and say this is a piece that I made, and I am um, I am publishing it or a reference to it at least uh, to the blockchain 
Um, in this case, it was the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and then uh, after that, if you want, you can list your NFT, which basically means you're also making it available for, mm -hmm. for sale or for yep. bidding as well. And so, um, you know, I had been, uh, I've been experimenting um, with uh, browser drawings for a number of years now, which natively exist in the web browser to begin with. Um, and so I was working on this piece um, at the time uh, called uh, RGB Triptych um, or so, so, Kameda. So yeah. yeah, so camera. So, so uh, how long ago was the web, um, you know, the, the brow browser drawing begin? Do you know? Yeah. Um, well, the, the techniques for doing this, um, the way that it was coded is something that I've been developing over some, okay. some years now. Um, okay. this, this particular piece, I think I had started working on it maybe about a year ago, and then it was just accelerated by this opportunity um, to make, to, to mint NFTs through this new platform that I minted it through, uh, that felt like I'm going to finish this up now. <laughs> this yeah. is, it's a good time. The deadlines yeah. always help, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so effectively the, the piece, um, the piece analyzes the red, green, and blue channels of the yes. image, and mm -hmm. then it splits them apart, uh, so that you get this kind of fluid movement of the red, green, and blue channels, which is what fundamentally um, digital images are comprised of in the way that we view them on a roster graphic screen. And then it, as it splits them, uh, they move in separate directions off of the screen, and then they reconverge back in a kind of synthesis um, that uh, renders them in their original uh, kind of white light that they were before and essentially, what I'm what I'm going for is um, is uh, is a is a kind of meditation on seeing in a unitive way, seeing in ways that um, that affirm uh, our our connectedness, our oneness with one another, um, and the way that that gets fragmented and then kind of phases in and out of this un unitive state. And so, you know, whether whether that plays well <laughs> in the current marketplace yeah. of, of NFTs or not, it just felt like this is this is where I want to this is where I want to start with. And um, uh -huh. and yeah, so so that felt that felt good. And that and that was that was my first kind of foray into the space uh, back in February, uh, February, March, April, those were those were heady times for yes. NFTs. And, sure. and I'm not saying that they still are. I, I'm, I'm kind of happy to say that there, there has been a little bit of a peak yes. in in that marketplace yeah. since then. And, um, right. And so <clears throat> for me now, rather than feeling like, oh, I got to put yeah. out some work right now. It's allowed me to step back a little bit, yeah. analyze how I want to present the work yes. you know, that I've yes. been doing over the years yes. in this space um, at a time where the interest is still very much there, but yes. it's not quite the gold rush it was right. in right. in April or, or May. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, if you track uh, Bitcoin prices, you know, it went way down and, and then it's now a little bit more stable. Uh, we'll see what happens, but you know that's 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 almost irrelevant to this conversation because uh, what you have done with your piece. When I first saw it, what reminded me a little bit was uh, when you go through trauma, mm. you start to disassociate uh, memories, mm. and that's happened to me uh, because of 9/11 and because of my recent journey, but. It, it it kind of you it, it literally looks like what you did mm -hmm. you know it it, it kind of sp splits and and mm -hmm. you remember something but you know it's almost like a ghost image and you don't recognize it anymore you know and and so you say i had i had this experience of painting this painting and you know i was in a museum show and i stood in front of the painting and i literally couldn't remember painting um, and later, you know, I, I have photos, my assistant yeah, yeah. was there with me, you know, but, but then this, this, this association, you know, I think, I think through time, uh, through hopefully healing, it, it can come back 
uh, mm -hmm. you know, slowly graduated, just like your peeps, right? Mm -hmm. So, so to for you to have created this in in the you know 2020 or you know beyond, but but you you, you know you minted it um, right at when when you know this this technology was beginning to happen. Uh, I think it's very significant. I think it, it's not just you know it doesn't. I mean the the market side is one thing, but mm -hmm. you know. Um, the signature of it, right, mm -hmm. embedded in time and space is, is is very significant, and and the other thing that I I think is very important to note here is, is that you know several things uh, because of blockchain technology and especially Ethereum development has changed in terms of how an artist. Uh, a living artist that uh, you know mm -hmm. who like me has a market of his own or her own um, has the, the entire understanding of the digital version of my art mm -hmm. right yeah. has changed yeah. right so so before I would tell young artists you know don't post your images on Facebook because we don't know how much of that image Facebook owns. You know, like they could use it, um, you know, legally. Um, it, it, you know, you're basically giving away copyright in a sense, mm -hmm. right? So that, and, and that still is to be tested legally, mm -hmm. but, but with the blockchain, you know, uh, like it's, it's better to have it stolen, right? Mm -hmm. the, the image image can be ubiquitous and like meme, you know, the, you know, um, images, right? The more people see it, the the more value it's going to have when it is minted you know what i mean like like it's it's kind of the reverse of you know like people are still like living artists like um so damien hurst and takashi murakami you know they both kind of wanted to mint their images but they didn't right because they realized that the market is still not there mm -hmm. but also it's the question of how you know who owns who owns it, right? And and with big uh, with blockchain technology, now you can, uh, you know, it's it's pretty much set that you can actually control at least the monetization of these two images, um, and 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 have have a say at least. You know, people are gonna steal your images anyways. You know, I, I have like all sorts of like, you know, churches will just take images of my <laughs> website and put like words on top, and I'm like, ah, oh, don't please don't do that. You know, <laughs> but but you know that 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 almost is 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 good now. Because you know the original still kind of has legitimacy, and you know, and with blockchain technology, at least I can mint it right to in the future. We're not there yet, and we're going to talk about that. But um, so going back to your piece, um, you know, first of all, I think it's very significant that you minted it because you know you have to go through the process to understand it, and 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 but but it's also I think. Um, uh, very much the marker of our time, you know, mm -hmm. like like you know what you did. So so I, I'm very interested. Now th that that is still available, right? That people can yeah. still bid on it. Yeah, there are the two of the three because um, I ended up making it because it's a triptych. I ended up making three variations on the piece, and two of okay. those three are available. Awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah you can <laughs> dive in, and, and uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm serious about that because you know I, I always say cultural care, uh, part of cultural care is to literally invest in artists' lives. You know, and it's not just their works. Uh, their works are you know first to invest in, but but once you do that you start the journey with the artist um, in, in this, you know, like early development of something new and uh, innovative and, and that, that, that can have significant uh, impact in culture. And it's, it's very important to that, you know, people who want to do culture care, you know, be, be able to um, understand, uh, uh, you know, the, both, both, both the power of it, but also the support that yeah. artists need, right? Yeah, and and I think that 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 um, that aspect of care and support 
uh, is is still so important, isn't it, Maka? Yeah. I yeah. mean, um, here's you know here's one of the things about working as an artist, and and it's no exception with digital work as well. Um, sometimes, unless you're working in a, in a collaborative or or cohort or something like that, like this can the, sometimes the work can be lonely, and so it's really yeah. helpful to actually have conversations like yeah. like we've had recently yeah. and yeah. with other friends to say this is the work yeah. that I've done because yeah. you know what the market is not always going to reward good work, no. and you know that's the case in a Chelsea gallery and it's yeah. the case in in the NFT space as well. Yeah. <laughs> like right. your best work is not necessarily going to be the best selling work, no. and so having right. a good community. Um, you know, fundamental to art education is the crit, right? Having people that you trust that can speak um, both uh, affirmatively and constructively into your working process, I feel like is probably helpful for anybody who is considering not just the, uh, an art journey in general, but like in, in, in the NFT space. Um, yeah. So that you actually have <laughs> the, yeah. the the the, um, the resources, like the buttressing that you mm -hmm. need um, to to move through this and make work that is authentic to your process right. and to who you are. Right. Like that's what what I guess maybe if anything, like what the world doesn't need is is more you know, um, gold rush work, like, oh, yeah. for example, 3D, three-dimensional yeah. rendering sells right. really well. So if you're just interested in selling NFTs, uh, which I should add is not a completely, um, is not a completely bad motivation, but if you're just yeah. interested in right. selling NFTs, like hone your 3D rendering skills, because yeah. chances are you'll be able to sell, sell, sell more work. But yeah. I think that ultimately what communicates and, and here's the thing, like when you min something to the blockchain, you can't really erase it. And so there's a sense in which you're, you're stamping yeah. your, your you're work in a way. Yeah, yeah that, that's hard to take yeah. back. So do stuff that, that you really care about and that you, I don't know, that maybe you want to be associated with yeah. for the long term. So speaking of that, you helped me to prepare something uh, for me to mint eventually. I, I don't sure, know, yeah. I'm still waiting for the timing, which it's called Nagasaki Koi. And it was after 9-11, you know, uh, I, I became a ground zero resident in downtown Manhattan. And, and I was really bothered by this word ground zero um, because that was previously used for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And what uh, as traumatic as my experience was, it's not nothing compared to what the, you know people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki experienced. So um, I did a crazy thing to take my son Tai with me to visit Hiroshima and later on, um, a friend of mine wanted to go to Nagasaki, so I went with him. And I think it was in 2003 or something like that, I ended up going to Nagasaki. And they, then later on, I ended up writing a book on Shusaku Endo's silence. And Endo was, um, you know, he considered Nagasaki to be his home. So I, I traveled there again and, and I, um, I walked around where Endo researched and, and so forth. Um, but you know, I, I had this video camera, uh, a Canon. Uh, you know, at the time it was like cutting edge. You know, something you can travel with. It was the, one of the first digital uh, portable cameras that you can carry. And and so I I, I was standing by the uh, the memorial uh, in Nagasaki, uh, which is really a church. It's a melted church, you know, because the detonation happened um, in Nagasaki and and literally pulverized um, uh, many lives, I, I think thousands of people who were in, in mass uh, at the time. And so there's this pond in, in the detonation site. Um, and, and there were these uh, beautiful Japanese carps, koi, swimming around. And, and they, they are gigantic. You know, they, they look like Godzilla kind of thing. You know? and, and so there's this kind of this oh, both beauty and uh, terror, you know, uh, that that I can feel from uh, um, from from that uh, visual spectacle, and so I, I I just stood over it with a camera, and uh, just maybe it was like a, a minute, but I I just took this video, and I came back and I was looking at it, and I was like, um, I I was reading T.S. Eliot, I was reading Dante, I was reading, you know, all these literature that dealt with trauma. And, and 
part of Eliot's interesting um, comment about poetry is that you know time present and time past, uh, you know perhaps present and time future. Um, so so there's a collapsing of time, and and so I thought, oh, you know that's interesting. And and what I experienced viscerally on on in Nagasaki. What if, you know, one of the things about digital technology or any technology, but video camera is that you can reverse it, right? <laughs> so so I, I just simply slowed it down and reversed it. And, and when I did that, of course the sound, you know, reversed. So it created this kind of weird, you know, uh, fantastic uh, sound. And so I, I, I was like reminded, okay, so sound is important. And later on, a friend of mine, Mamoru, who's a sound artist, uh, put a, a sound, sound art to it with that sound, you know, kind of as a backdrop. Um, and, and so I, I had this piece since, you know, for nearly 20 years. And it's one of the few digital moving uh, images that I did early on. And it, it just happens to correspond with my aesthetic uh, with Nihonga and Japanese art and, you know, it's Japanese carp, which is like a living version of Nihonga, you know, so and the tragic uh, reality of it, the ground zero reality of that. And, and can we reverse time, you know, in, in terms of dealing with trauma? Uh, all, all these things are floating around literally in, in this video. And, and I showed it to you and you said, well, it's not quite ready for, you know, uh, digital presentation. So tell me about that. When you saw the image, what, what did you see and uh, what, what did you do to it? And I'm going to show that right now in, in this uh, uh, video as you're speaking. Yeah, sure. Well, as a caveat, I mean, <laughs> maybe it wasn't ready for a digital presentation, but obviously, like, it's baked with already so much meaning. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a matter of, like, I think it was kind of came out of a conversation, like, oh, how, where could this go from here yeah. Yeah. Um, if I were to consider making this into an NFT? And one of the, one of the issues with that piece um, was just the size of the video, right? Yeah. So, so the video I think was originally shot because it, you were experimenting yeah. kind of early on with some of this. Yeah. So I think the, the original video was shot at something like 640 by 480 pixels, yes. which, <laughs> which these pixel days yes. with like, you know, high DPI smartphone yeah. technology, like yeah. that's just a little square in the bottom yeah. of your yeah. smartphone or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, some of what I do, some of the, some of my work kind of deals at the pixel level. I'm, I'm interested yeah. in like in elements of what comprise digital media as well as their potential. So for the RGB triptych, triptych that was, you know, uh, that had to do with moving these, uh, these color channels in kind of in a phase in and out. Uh, another strategy that I've been exploring lately is analyzing pixels and then converting them into alternative shapes as a way of representing that video. And so, and that's actually very much the direction that the NFTs that I've been working on lately have been moving in. So sure. getting back to your piece, Mako, what I was thinking was like, oh, I, I'm really drawn to the, um, the overall atmosphere of this piece. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I think when you did, yeah, at one point you exhibited it uh, yes. as a projection on the yes. wall, which I, I, right. I imagine made for a really nice um, counterpoint yeah. to your painting. I actually space. Uh, rear projected into Japanese paper. Yeah. <clears throat> so the pixelation works, you know, um, together no with this ancient good. materiality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I decided to to um to kind of explore those pixels a little bit further. Um, and what I what I decided to do was um was as I was looking at the video, uh, the 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 koi scales have a really nice quality to them that you yeah, can kind of yeah. discern from it. So what I did was I I made I, I kind of hand coded a a shape that was that kind of referenced those individual scales of the carp. And yeah. then I use that shape of those scales to render the entire video image. And right. so what you get now is you kind of step back away yeah. from the, um, the representational koi swimming um, slowly mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. the water. And then what it becomes mm -hmm. is a, a, a kind of, uh, is a kind of um, 
fluctuation of color and oh. form that you if you take some time with it you could probably still tell yeah. our fish in a pond but also right. kind of move it back from that such that right. you could I, I try to go for a, a little bit of a borderline yeah. between yes. discernible and yes. then kind of just abstract yes. movement that's going yeah. on within that space. Um, yeah. And so that kind of um, just took it in another direction from, yeah. from where it was uh, yeah. that could potentially uh, work well as a fully digital piece. That's beautiful. I am so, so grateful. Um, What's fascinating about what you said was um, uh, when I was a teenager, my father was at Bell Labs in Murray Hill, and there was this lady, uh, she happens to be the wife of the, my doctor, uh, Lillian Schwartz, um, uh, just, you know, working on her early digital art, uh, and she's considered to be one of the first digital artists. And what she was working on was an image of Abraham Lincoln pixelated. So she used a very early, early uh, form of, you know, digital technology, and she amplified the the abstraction uh, that, that uh, you know, the, like in digital camera, we, you know, we don't realize it's all pixelated. It was just, you know, it just fools our eye with, you yeah. know, in in some way. Uh, so she took advantage of that and she pulled it way back. And, and when you uh, sent me that, you know, what you worked on uh, it, uh, to help me, it, it just reminded me of Lillian's work, you know, and, and it, was, it was delightful because I, I, I kind of connected, oh, this blockchain technology, which is brand new and, you know, everybody's like not sure what this is. Uh, and, you know, this uh, NFT um, that, that digital artists are starting to use, Maybe there's an interesting overlap between technology, history of technology, you know, media ecology, Nihonga, you know, and 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 it just pulled pull me back uh, literally, you know, in, in, in a more, more of a philosophical, metaphysical sense that, oh, I, I can connect these things, you know, to to the past. And and so so that that was a, a beautiful experience and, and we'll, we'll decide what to do with it. But um, so uh, Joshua, we're, we're at the end of our time and uh, I want to do this again uh, because I have so many questions um, and I want to kind of introduce to our audience some, some of the people that um, I have been following uh, with NFT, uh, Erica Anderson being one of them, uh, yeah. one of the early, uh, I think she's creating some really beautiful images and um, uh, I don't know if she'll, uh, uh, you know, uh, agree to get on, uh, at least we can introduce her pieces, you know, but, but she, um, uh, I think, it would be great to uh, create kind of a series on YouTube where we, we you know, because it's ongoing, right? So, so, so the last last thing uh, for this segment, uh, what's happening like today that that excite you about the technology? Is there anything new that came up in in the last month or so that is interesting? Yeah. Um... I think that there are there are a few things that have happened since since we last spoke yeah. um, that that are that are worth mentioning. Um, uh, <laughs> there, there are a bunch of things that, that we could talk about. So so maybe it is good to have another conversation at some point. Um, but let me let me just ram just, let me just run through a few of those. Yeah. Um, I think one of the um, I think one of the most important developments in the NFT space is um, is alternative networks for distributing NFTs. Um, one of them um, that I've been really interested in recently is called Hicket Nunk, um, which is a uh, which is an NFT platform based on an alternative cryptocurrency called Tezos. And the reason that's significant is because it is a proof of stake cryptocurrency network rather than a proof of work, which means um, basically that uh, people get to verify block chain transactions based on how much of the currency they already hold. So it, they have a stake in the system. That's significant because it means, because that is also the direction that Ethereum is eventually moving in. So if you care about like the environmental cost of, um, of, uh, you know, blockchain technology in general, proof of stake networks like Tezos, which again is uh, what Hicket Nunc runs on, and eventually Ethereum, 
um, are moving in that direction. So that gives me some confidence that it's <laughs> that that helps yeah. um, with some of that ethical dimension. Um, so some of the work that I'll be minting in actually uh, in this week or next is is on the Hicket Nunc platform in part because it also oh. allows you to do code based work and not just like JPEG or video files. <laughs> I think the other significant development um, is uh, is the celebration of and affirmation and um, focus of people of color within the space. A yes. lot of these, um, yeah. a lot of these. Uh, you know, our, a lot of these NFT platforms are, are based in Silicon Valley, which yeah. has, you know, in general, like tech has um, a problem with yeah. being overwhelmingly white and male. And so I think it's a huge development um, that that women and people of color are being celebrated in the in their accomplishments and in for the amazing work that they've always been doing. But mm -hmm. that's being highlighted in yeah. a very conscious way, especially over the past couple months with some of the exhibitions that are kind of um, forming around the uh, that work as well. So I, I feel like that that bodes well for the future yeah. of the space yeah. too. Um, and then uh, and then thirdly, I, as I already alluded to, we we've kind of moved past at least the initial hype cycle, which I think makes it a good yeah. time to uh, yes. to you know if if others are watching this thinking oh maybe I yeah. should do this as well yeah. I think that actually makes it a good time because yes. it's yeah. not uh, it's not the gold rush that it was right. especially at its right. peak in May right. so yes. if you've got some extra time and you're like oh I want to I want to explore this 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 summer um, mm -hmm. you know maybe maybe take a look at Hicket Nunc, for example, yeah, yeah, um, or, yeah. or other platforms. I think the platform that you choose uh, is relevant to the kind of work that you yeah. intend to make. So, you know, looking around at some of those platforms uh, is a good idea. And uh, finally, maybe most um, recent news um, that uh, uh, there, was a, there was a publication out of Art Basel, which, um, which kind of looked at NFTs as more than just be, uh, as being more than just a fad. So as you are well versed in this kind of yeah. intersection of art and, and the market that yeah. we're seeing in the NFT space, um, uh, I think is, uh, is going to be, um, has, has some staying power. Wow. I mean, there's, there's a lot there and we're, we're going to, you know, put links all over. So right. especially uh, your new minted work, uh, you know, oh, uh, audience know. And uh, but, you know, I always say at the end of these uh, broadcasts, you know, let's be makers again. You know, we, we, we are all makers. And when we're making some things, you know, this this reality opens up and um, and, and this uh, digital technology is, is a technology just like a brush is a technology so so we can really you know create uh something enduring you know that's uh also you know i i'm hoping that um you know we we can create works that span 20 years you know that uh, to create you know um and hopefully that'll be enduring more than 20 years but you know some something that marks the time that we're in and and to be able to do it uh with as you noted authentically with with it's something that only i can do only you can do um and and those those are valuable right uh, in itself um apart from the transactional reality so so I, I i hope to be in continued conversation with you uh about this and uh, thank you today for enlightening us um opening up the matrix matrix <laughs> um, um, and as, as well as i i think um, um you know just realizing like this state of communication that like it's it's not by accident that we're doing this on Zoom that will be edited and you know put onto YouTube and put on the Instagram you know and and and, and all of that right is 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 part of the let's say form and content relationship. Right. So, so what's happening with uh, you know digital uh, media and um, hope, and and what we're talking about is creating community. You noted that uh, is is essential for artists not to be alone, <clears throat> but but they they are you know uh, uh, sojourning with others, right? And hopefully not just artists, but people who are interested in supporting. Uh, that and and their creativity uh, can be part of a part of the journey. So, okay. so thank you so much uh, today, and um, hopefully we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll do a series together. 
Thanks so much for inviting me uh, today, Mako. Thanks, uh, as always, for your uh, work on culture care and yeah. just the generous spirit with which you are um, carrying on these conversations. OK. Well, that was an amazing conversation with Joshua, and I'm glad that you were uh, able to join us. And uh, we will continue this conversation, um, hopefully every month or so, to keep up with the ever-changing uh, landscape of cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain technology. Um, I will try to do my best to keep up with uh, what's happening, especially in terms of artists uh, being involved uh, in the, what seems like a total game changer uh, in terms of art market, in terms of what we do. So uh, I look forward to uh, speaking to Joshua some more about uh, many questions that I have. Uh, if you have any thoughts or questions, please uh, feel free to um, uh, subscribe and um, uh, send me those questions directly. You can also reach me through social media, Twitter and Instagram. I am at I am Fujimura. So uh, God bless you. Uh, let's be makers again. Let's uh, continue to uh, generate uh, rather than just to consume uh, uh, these offerings, uh, create something new out of them.